fear. Okay, what is it that we're so afraid of? Why are we afraid to get up in front of the class and speak? What is it that's, that's so frightening? Who has ideas about that? Um, well, when it comes to me, when I'm talking in front of people, I feel like people are like, judging me. Mm -hmm. My actions were not very long saying. So you're kind of worried about what people are thinking, right? Who else? Who else? Yeah. Just not comfortable with your peers yet. You don't know them, so they're strangers. Yeah, so you don't know the people. You don't know what they're thinking. Kind of all eyes are upon you, right? Anybody else? What do you, yeah. You want to come across suave and confident? Yeah, you want to appear confident. You're afraid that you might not look that way, maybe, huh? You might not appear as confident as you would like to be. Who else? Anybody else? I think it all kind of boils down to judgment. That we're afraid that people are going to be, you know, thinking bad things about us. So we're all, we all become kind of self-conscious. But we really can't control what other people think, can we? So what we can control is what we think about ourselves. So where do you think that fear originates? Where, where does that fear come from? When you get up in front of the class and you know, you're a little bit nervous, where does that fear come from? Where does it originate? That you're not doing something right. Again, you're kind of self-critical, thinking you're not doing something right. You're doubting yourself. You lack confidence. But you know where it comes from? Between your ears. It's what you're telling yourself. When we talk about communication, I talked about interpersonal communication. Interpersonal communication is communicating between two people. There's a term called intrapersonal communication. That means self-talk or the dialogue we have with ourselves. Have you ever heard of people talking to themselves, right? And people don't want to say that they talk to themselves, right? Because people think they're strange or something's wrong with them. But we talk to ourselves more than we talk to any other person there is. Or you've heard people say, it's okay to talk to yourself as long as you don't answer back. <laughs> but, but we have a dialogue going on from the moment we get up in the morning till the time we go to bed at night. When you get out of bed and your alarm's going off, you know, you're hitting that snooze button, you go, oh, I wish I hadn't signed up for that 8 o'clock class. I can't believe I did that. And then you're getting out of bed and you say, oh, public speaking, oh my gosh, why on earth do I have to take this? And then you get to class, you know, and you go, oh, she's talking about speeches. This is horrible. I'm a terrible at public speaking. I'm shy. I'm never going to be able to do this. And then, oh, I hope she doesn't keep this as, as till the end of class because I forgot to eat breakfast and I want to run over to McDonald's and I want to get a, you know, a croissant or something before class. So we have this dialogue going on all the time in our head. And it affects us. You know, there's a, a speaker out there called Carolyn Mace, and she says we create our own reality, you know, by the thoughts that we have. So our thoughts are powerful. If you don't learn one other thing in this class, learn that you can control your thinking and it will make an, a huge difference in your life. <clears throat> our thoughts create our experience. So if you're sitting here on speech day or at home preparing to come to class on speech day and say, I can't do this, oh my gosh, I'm so scared, people are going to be looking at me, what if I fall on the way up to the podium, what if I forget what I'm going to say, think about the anxiety you're creating. What happens when we become anxious? It affects us physiologically, right? Physically? When you become anxious, what happens to your body? What are some of the symptoms that you experience? Shaky legs. Shaky legs. Hands. Jittery. Voice trembles. What Sweat. else? Sweating. 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 Flush face. Stuttering when you're speaking. Stuttering. <laughs> Who else? Anybody else? How about those butterflies of the stomach? We can actually feel kind of nauseous. So, so our thoughts are so powerful that they create physiological or physical symptoms. They affect the way we feel. So you can imagine if you're telling yourself those kind of things, those disempowering thoughts that are creating a lot of anxiety and fear, it's going to affect you physically. If you get used to controlling what you're thinking or changing your thinking to more positive thinking, you can have a better experience. So rather than telling yourself, I can't do this, I'm shy, and as I said, don't label yourself as shy. 
because it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you label yourself as something, you act accordingly. If you tell yourself you're confident, you'll start acting confident. So I tell my students, remember the three C's. Tell yourself, I'm confident, capable, and confident. Because if you sit there saying, I can do this, I'm well prepared, I'm practiced, I'm organized, what I say matters, I've got a voice that needs to be heard, then your experience up here is going to be a lot different than if you're engaging in self-sabotage and telling yourself, you can't do this, I'm a failure, oh my goodness, everybody's going to be looking at me. So change your thought process and it will change your experience. So I told you there's a lot of interdisciplinary connections, and you might learn a lot about psychology in this class, because the fear is psychological. It comes from what we're telling ourselves. So we need to be more critical, critical at about evaluating our own thought process, not only the material that we receive and research online, but we need to be better critical thinkers when we're evaluating what we tell ourselves. So that's where a lot of the fear comes from. Now there's an acronym, and acronym means these letters stand for a word. There's an acronym for fear. Who knows the acronym for fear? Anybody heard it? Okay, I'll give you the first part. False. Anybody heard it now? Evidence. There you go, you got it. Appearing real. So, I told you I want you to be critical thinkers. I want you to examine the evidence that you're basing your fears on. Where does that, what evidence do you have that you will not succeed in this class? Maybe in the past you've had a bad experience speaking in front of somebody, uh, maybe you forgot something you had to say, but there's another good speaker called Tony Robbins, and he says, your past does not equal your future. So if something happened to you in the past, let it go, okay? That's why you're here. You're going to learn how to organize your thoughts, how to be a better public speaker. So you need evidence to support your, what you're believing. So if you don't have any evidence to support the fact that you might not or might pass this class, then, it's, then it, you have nothing to substantiate that. So uh, ask yourself, what evidence do I have that I'm not going to do well in this class? If I'm doing well in my other classes, I do my work, I read my assignments, I'm prepared, I'm organized, I'm a good student, chances are you're going to do well in this class just like you do in your other classes. So look at the evidence that you're basing all these fears on. You know what, but even though there might not be evidence, just like we talked about, they probably appear real because I told you thoughts are powerful. And when we start engaging in negative self-talk or disempowering messages, we do have all those physiological things that go on inside of our body creating the fear. So even though we have no evidence to support our fears, they, they can appear real if we start uh, engaging in that negative type of thinking. Now there's another acronym that's called Forever Evading another reality. <coughs> it's putting off things that we're fearful of. I told you a lot of students add the class, they drop it, they add it, they drop it. I see them from semester to semester until finally it's their last semester here, they have to take it. So we have a tendency to put off things that we're fearful of. So at some point we have to learn how to step out of our comfort zones a little bit in order to accomplish what we need to do. There's a great book out there for any of you that have any anxiety or fear in your life, not just of public speaking, but anything. There's a book called Feel, F-E-E-L, The Fear and Do It Anyway. Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway by Susan Jeffers. And she says the only way you're ever going to overcome your fear is to just buy it, just to do it. So we, we need to do the things we fear the most. And you've already taken that first step. You're here, you signed up for the class, you showed up the first day. So we need to step outside of that comfort zone a little bit. Now I see this in class where people get in comfort zones. You came in here today and you sat at all these tables. On Thursday, you're probably going to come back and sit at the same table. If not, maybe by next week or the third or fourth week of class you'll be sitting at the same table. 
And then by the fifth or sixth week, if somebody's sitting in your spot when you come into class, you're going to be kind of upset with them. You're going to go, hey, that's my spot. Don't you see the reserve sign there? <laughs> so we all have our little comfort zones, right? And that helps us to feel safe and secure. But we've all gone through difficult times in our lives. I'm sure all of us have lost somebody close to us, you know. We've had experiences that have been challenging, you know. We've, we might have been one of the people that have lost homes, you know, when um, the real estate market crashed. We could have, you know, maybe uh, experienced loss of jobs. There's all kinds of challenges we go through. And those are difficult circumstances we all face. And so we have to go through this tough time and we have to get through that comfort zone. We still have to step outside of our comfort zone because you'll realize when you get to the other side of this challenge that you've grown. You become a better, stronger, more compassionate person. And so uh, that growth process is painful. But even though we go through these challenges and really difficult and sad situations sometimes, you know, even though it's painful, and we don't like it, and we get out, come out the other side, hopefully we've gained something from that experience, and we become a better person because of it. Maybe we're more likely to help other people that have gone through similar situations. So we can learn from our experiences. We can grow from them. But in order to do that, we have to be willing to step outside the comfort zone a little bit. And so that's what I'm asking you to do in this class, is to, to face the fear. Just step outside the comfort zone. We'll do it, we'll do it step by step. Okay, so uh, 